This is Big Red, the biggest dune in the Simpson Desert, and it's the gateway to Birdsville and the end of our adventure. <laughs> so close, I can see, I can see Birdsville. <laughs> go, 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 go. Big Red, tick. I'm gonna roll it, the <laughs> But let's take you back a few days because getting here was the real adventure. <laughs> Looking for a mad deal on the gear that you're chasing? Like this awning, I've got you covered. Keep an eye out throughout this video for an exclusive discount code and get 10% off store-wide for all Full Drive Supercenter YouTube subscribers. And as always, enjoy this adventure because this is an epic trip. The last time you saw us, we were right in the middle of the Simo. Well, where one adventure stops, another one starts. We're obviously on the Hay River track at the moment. Now, end goal, well, my end goal is the Birdsville Pub. For now, we're gonna add something into the mix because you see, we've been given permission to head directly east right over there to see if we can find any of the old boundary markers that mark the border between the Northern Territory and Queensland. I'm not too hopeful we'll find anything. They're definitely out there, but it's a heck of a lot of country and a very small stake. But what a way to extend the adventure of doing the Simpson Desert. So, we're gonna turn left. We're just gonna cross a few sand dunes and see if we can find the border where probably no one's ever been except the people that put the border there in the first place. I'm looking forward to it, I'll see if the boys are. Sean, are you got a copy? Yeah, mate. Mate, as discussed, we got plenty of fuel with us and a sense of adventure. You keen to head in and see if we can find this border? Yeah, mate, dead keen. Now, Brad, I was not even gonna ask you, mate, because you'll be grinning like a chimp in there. Definitely, mate, any, any time we can head off the track, I'm in for it. I should put you in front, you'd be able to blaze a trail. Andrew, you'd be keen, mate. Definitely. Uh, the last little while's been uh, a little bit easy, but uh, let's get off the track and get some dunes under our belt. 100%, mate. And uh, Stu, should we let the dog off the leash? Absolutely, mate. Looking forward to the running around. And Russell, you've just been uh, you've been loving this whole experience. I reckon if I said to you, let's spend another month out here, you'd be keen. Righto, boys. This is as good a spot as any. Let's head in. So with that, our course is set. We're turning off the Hay River to head cross country to find the Queensland Northern Territory border. Then we'll be joining up with the QAA line and heading east towards Birdsville and better still, an icy cold beer. Right now, we're pointing into the Never Never and going cross country without a track in sight. Middle of the day, the sand is pretty soft up here, boys. Of course, we do have special permission to do this. Just heading cross country like this is not something you are allowed to do without written permission. And of course, we've got that. Another June. <laughs> that gives a view from the top part. This right here is grassroots four-wheel drive exploration, and as such, I love it. It doesn't take long before you really feel off the grid out here. Yeah, it's certainly a long way from anywhere out here. Really, for me, doesn't get much better than punching into an area that has never, ever been driven before. Earlier on I was wishing for some dunes, so uh, we certainly got some. These are soft as. Look at him go, will you? You can really see the difference that that Steinbauer makes. These dunes out this way are only fairly small in size, and as you can see, most of the boys aren't having too many difficulties at all. Tire pressures really are everything out here, but you've got to be careful with punches. So far, so good. Oh boy, these dunes, I tell you what, they're endless. One of the biggest issues I've got is because I'm pushing the lines through for the rest of the crew behind me, so I, oh man, I've got to try and pick the easiest spot up. Well, this doesn't look easy, I'm gonna even go. But what I don't want to do is get stuck, so I kind of back off before I do. Like just there, I'll come back and have another go at that. And what that does is create a bit of a, a bit of a track. What I can do now is just give it a bit more hurt because I've ironed out a few of those bumps. So I'll get into it a bit now, see how we go. Yep, up and over, you beauty. Oh, not knowing what's on the other side is really nerve-wracking because I could just fall into a massive hole, I don't know. And you might be surprised to know, another sand dune. That big six-wheeler, I mean, look at the thing. It was designed for exploration and adventure. Tell you what, Simpson Desert is one of my favourite places to go forward driving. Whoa! <laughs> when you start getting off the grid, 
This place just gets really wild. It really reminds you just how remote you are out here. You're miles away. You look in every single direction, it's just red sand dunes, and we couldn't be further off the grid if we tried right now. Still got to have your wits about you though out here. Anything could go wrong if it does, you're usually on your own. So we're being pretty, pretty careful out here. Just then, Stu's gone down. He's belly deep in a really soft section of sand. But we've been here before, we know exactly what to do. No better time than to break out the Max Tracks. This is exactly what Brad designed the Max Tracks for in the first place. Whenever you buy a set of Max Tracks, you always get these little lanyards here. Now, they're not to put your keys on, although you probably could do. They're actually to attach to the Max Track. Just poke that through there, double it up on itself like that. This hangs off the side. What's that for? I'm going to demonstrate what this is for in a minute. But for now, that's what you do with it. All right, this right here, it's the third piece in the puzzle. I reckon I've lost an entire set of Max Tracks over the years on Fraser Island and I've almost dug to China trying to find them. The easiest way to do it is that two second little strap, stick it on the side, then literally just follow it down to where it's been dug into the sand. And I don't recommend you do what I'm doing here, which is lifting it up by the strap, but out of there comes your Max Track. That little orange strap will save you a lot of money. Put it on the side, you won't lose your Max Tracks. Gotta find three more now. So what I've learned at this point about driving sand dunes behind all these other cars is that after them, gently, gently doesn't cut it. Mumbo does. That's right, Stu. Sometimes there's nothing better than a good old bit of momentum. The rest of the convoy follows suit. There's no other problems on this journey. As I'm busting up this sand dune, mate, I've got to ask, like, what's the history behind General Grabbers? General's been going for over 100 years already. I don't know if you know that. A lot of time, investment, R&D going into making these tyres suitable for our market. Mate, what I really like about it is the fact that you're out here testing the AT3s in the Simpson Desert. It's the only mod you've done to that Land Cruiser, and um, it's keeping up with all the bigger trucks. It just shows, I suppose, when a good quality set of tyres gets on a vehicle, they can go extreme places. Yeah, mate, that was the that was the idea. Let's bring the 83s out and put them up against all the monies and see if they can make it out here. And happy to be able to prove that they're also good and capable in Australia. Well, it's good to see, mate. Very refreshing from a full driving point of view. You not only do a lot of R&D testing um, at the head office and stuff like that, but also out in the real world where four-wheel drivers like to use them. Yeah, that's right. You know, we, we do millions of hours and, and kilometres out in our test facilities all over the world, but, you know, when you have to put them into real-world conditions to show people that they can actually cut it. Well, mate, if they can cope out here in the Simpson Desert, there's not a place I won't be able to stand up in. There's just something about getting off a track. You see, tracks take you where other people have been before. You're not the first, you'll never be the first on a track. When you get off the track though, and decide to do something like this, when you've got permission and you're in an area that you're allowed to do it, there's something early explorer about it. I know it's not the same, it's not even close to the same, but we're finding our own way. We're using GPS's. We're off grid, we're right out there, we're giving it a go. And there's something about that that I just love. And I really urge you, if you ever get a chance, and you've done a fair bit of four wheel driving, do try and get amongst an expedition or a group of people that are going off grid, that are going to do some cross country stuff. Because trust me, this is the pinnacle of four wheel driving. Cross country, slow going. Or I might just pull up here actually and grab the VMS and have a closer look. Yeah, we're right on the border. I reckon we'll have a bit of a drive along here. Now the chances of us finding one of the old border markers are, I would almost say, slim to none. All right, lads, according to the GPS, we are a couple of hundred metres from the border. I'll get us as smack bag on as I can and then we'll jump out and have a look around. What are you uh, you know what the best thing is about crossing the border into Queensland? There isn't one. No, there is, and I think you'll agree with me. As soon as we cross that border, mate, it's half an hour closer to beer o'clock. Settle down. He's right, you know. We're so close, but we've taken to foot so we can truly straddle the border between the two states. Well, that's the border right there, mate. Yep. You, you figured it out? What do you reckon? What do you want to do? I reckon it's... We're free and easy. Since it's half an hour difference in Queensland, mate, yeah. I reckon it's, it's, it's nearly, it's it's nearly time nearly, to go to camp. Nearly and, o'clock. Have a beer. Well, we've got to get back to where we came. Um, and I don't think I want to follow my tracks. I reckon we go down let's south go down a bit and then... Hook, and head, hook head, head a bit. We're going to go south anyway, so let's go south and then hook back across and tackle yep. these dunes on the way back. It's going to be harder this way as well. It will be, yeah. Get into camp early. Crack a brew. Like the sound of this. Done. Do it. Just look at the camera car go. 
Tell you what, the camera car really has been a star performer on this trip. You don't usually see a lot of the camera car because it hides behind the scenes, but it does a lot of hard work. And in this trip, it's got three camera guys in it. It's got all the gear on it. It's been blasting up those dunes and making short work of the Simpson Desert. True beast. Right now, we're heading southeast, but we've made a cool discovery. <laughs> Have a go at that, will you? Jeepers creepers. That is impressive. Wow. We're gonna go down for a closer look at that. <laughs> that was a bit sketchy. Quite the drop off. You see, up ahead, we found a huge salt lake. Super big, flat, expansive land that is just begging to be explored. That's just a massive salt lake. <laughs> this salt lake actually showed up on our VMS and it really did stick out and it was something we just had to go and have a look at. Hey, that's just what I love about getting off the beaten track. Come across little hidden gems like this. Unreal, mate. It's nice and flat and heaps of firewood. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I mean, if you guys don't mind, I mean, if you, if you, if you want to go back and, you know, head to the pub at Birdsville or, I don't know, go and have a shower or, you know, a bit of modern comfort, you can do so. But if you want to stay out here for the night, what do you reckon? I just try and hold me back. Yeah, you don't think you need to ask me twice. That was an amazing scene as we came over that last June to see that lake ahead of us, wasn't it? Yeah, that's absolutely sick. Let's go and have a look, see if we can find a campsite. In locations such as the Simpson Desert, a feature like this really is something that stands out. And for us, it marks a perfect spot to camp for the night. Mate, this place is off tap. What a place. What I a reckon. Place. Let's let's skirt the edge, because I ain't driving on this. No way. Not, not a hope in heck. Let's just skirt the edge and see if we can't find somewhere a bit elevated, plenty of firewood, somewhere to sit back and have a beer. I reckon it won't be hard, mate. This is insane. Out in the middle, there's camel tracks, there's dingo tracks. There's Doesn't even have a name. Kangaroos. Does it have a name? Doesn't, it's not marked on the map. No, it's not. All right, well, let's call it Lake Shawnee. Done. Done. All right, let's get it. Let's, let's I don't somewhere. think many people visit Lake Shawnee. No, 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 no. <laughs> not really. Let's find somewhere comfortable. All right, all right. All right. There's plenty of dry firewood around, lots of open space, and really, with a scene like this, how could you not stop? Mate, I'm not too keen to go too much further across this salt lake. What do you reckon about that little part we found back there for a campsite? No, mate, it sounds like an absolute plan. That's probably the best spot too. You can see both sides of the lake. And um, I reckon as the sun goes down, mate, without being a uh, romantic, it's gonna be one heck of a camp. Pull away, go out, grab a beer, and uh, kick back and enjoy the sunset. The thing about driving on these salt lakes though, we got a crust of salt, and underneath is usually mud. This one actually feels a little bit soft, but it's not too bad. But you wouldn't want to drive out in the middle. Let me give you the hot tip. How good is this? Honestly, driving on the side of a lake that doesn't even have a name out in the middle of the Simpson Desert. This is why we own four-wheel drives to come to places off the grid as remote as it gets just like this. Unreal. I reckon tonight's camp will be one for the ages. It's late in the afternoon right now and temperatures are still really nice. Tonight, however, with the clear skies that we've currently got, we're expecting temperatures to drop down into single figures. As far as I'm concerned, that is perfect for camping. Get a big fire going and then snuggle down into your swag for the night and you sleep well. You never sleep better than when you're under canvas, as far as I'm concerned. Tonight, of course, I'm whacking the old crash pad out under the awning and I am gonna sleep like a king. This is the life. Good mates, big skies, cold beers, and a few good yarns. Good mate, that's looking good. It is mate. I can just give you a hand here. Oh, there's already half a jar in there. Yeah. I hope you like some garlic. Hang on, mate, I'll just... Yeah, what's that stuff? Yes! Doing yes! That. I yeah. like it. Chef Pierre over here. Don't put that in there no, yet. Okay. We're not even close. <laughs> Settle down, Tiger. In fact, all right, all right. what I'll get you to do is, you cook tomorrow's lunch. Yeah, fair Some snaggers. Cool, cool, cool. cool. That's a good idea. Speaking of tomorrow, yep. we've been going west-east, which I do a heck of a lot. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow, East we're going to go east west. And you know, that means in the desert. Yeah, super steep. Yeah. And we came down some day, I'd come up over him, pretty okay, and, and then and just moots straight down. down. I, I nearly lost my stomach, got vertigo yeah, at the top yeah, of some yeah. of those dunes. So we're going to so, go down those tomorrow. Yeah, it'd be up fun. those, I it'd should say. It'd be fun, it'd be fun. I'll be right. Go. I'll be right. You'll be right. I'm going to knock a couple of PSI out of the old tyres. Yeah, good idea. Um, good idea. Should tell dude, I reckon it'll be fine, though. Yeah, I reckon it'll be fine. I'll be interested to see how the big six wheeler goes. Because that weighs, it weighs like five tonne. It's got power. Shorty's like two and a half. Yeah, it's got six wheels. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. 
So it's like shorty and a half. Yeah. Yeah. And double. Yeah. And more. Yeah. Oh, more than that. Yeah. More it than is. that. You could fit shorty in the back and it's still in GVM. That would be actually quite nice. I could sit back and just watch a movie. <laughs> well, mate, it's going to be tough tomorrow. That's it is. It's going to be a cracking day. And then we head down to uh, the right. QAA. Yeah. And then. Okay, so. So what you're trying to say is put the chili sausages on for lunch tomorrow. Do it. Need a bit of go. Hundred percent. But here's the good news. You know, it's at the end of all this. Good my cool. favourite pub in the world, and I've got a surprise at the end of this that I think you're going to like. Oh, well, it's not a surprise. It's a little thing that I'm going to do at the end of this. Chili and beer. I don't like that. No, no, no. This is this is not that. This is not okay, that. But okay. there's something right at the end that I think you're going to approve of. Okay. At the Birdsville pub. Oh well, I like. Yeah. Uh, count me in. Done, 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 done. Cool, man. With that, Sean, I trusted me to cook up a storm, and that I did. And I tell you what, it was delicious. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tourer Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame. Are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam. But warning, it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter, you get more for less. Just as the sun starts to crest those dunes, it's my favourite time out in the desert, and um, for good reason too. As soon as that sun starts to pop up, it starts to put charge into my 12 volt system because of the solar panel. On um, this trip, I'm actually running a fridge and a dedicated freezer, plus my camp lights. I've got a big 12 volt drain, so I need all the power I can get. As soon as that sun pops over the horizon, I know my charge is just about to begin for the day. Back in the saddle, and we're pointing back in the direction of the Hay River track. Well, gentlemen. If there's a better campsite out there, I'd sure like to see it. This means, of course, that we're going to be tackling dunes from the steeper side. Yeah, I reckon I'll remember that one for quite a while. I think just the fact that we're so far off the grid and um, sort of found this little place and had it to ourselves makes all the difference. Yeah, that was right up there. That's pretty special. Great sunset and always a magnificent sky at night. You know what, though? We've got to go east to west across these dunes now. It's going to be... <laughs> We're gonna have a work cut out for us, I reckon. Yep, forging a track back across east to west. It doesn't get much tougher, really. That's, um, yeah, I don't really know how we're gonna go. We'll just uh, suck it and see. Mate, you're gonna wanna use all of your horsepowers. Just thinking that, mate. Gosh, it's soft, actually. Low down torque really comes in because you can't exactly get into no. fifth gear before no. you get the bottom. No, I'm going to try though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be second given It's obviously everything. just this last little pinch just and this is bit. the first June from camp. I know, I know. We've look got, at we've look got at hundreds to go. They're like waves in a set. They just go and go and go. Well, mate, I'm going to try and get into this before it heats up anymore. Well, I might stand here just to give you a bit of I'll need support, it. all right? I'll need it, all right. This is super soft. Right, eh? here goes nothing. Oh boy. Let's go, mate. More revs, more horsepowers. Momentum is definitely your friend going in this direction. Easy, go the D-Max. You just gave it heaps of berries. That low down torque, bang, low tire pressures, really makes a difference. Nah, really easy, really easy. Yeah, that's cool. All right, the big six wheeler is up. Let's see what it can do. Oh, so close, so close. <laughs> Righto, stand back. He might just spin the world the opposite direction. <laughs> That's the way. Righto, Shauno. You've seen how it's done. How good was that? Low tyre pressures, lots of low down torque. Boom! First engine down. About a hundred to go. Get up this big hill, eh? Nope, you're gonna need more That's than that, Stu Dog. That was so hard. <laughs> <laughs> you 
going to go a bit far. Right foot, Stu, the right foot, mate. Still a bit more momentum. And it looks like the other boys have <laughs> learned a thing or two. Right boot equals over the top of the sand dune. What, you know the sand's soft when the six wheeler's getting stuck and having a couple of goes at it. He's taking a bigger run up, so I think he's gonna probably get hair over the top of this one now. It's plain to see that tackling the dunes from this side is a lot more challenging, but of course with that comes a lot more fun. Up and over. <laughs> a little bit of third gear. Pedal to the boards. That was the technique there. <laughs> During the middle of the day when the sun's at its peak and it's hottest, the sand is actually a lot softer than it is first thing in the morning. Of course, in the morning, you get a bit of moisture in the air and that settles in the ground and sort of makes it ever so slightly harder. All right, I've had to start tonight's dinner a little bit early today because I've got a pork roast on the go for tonight. Now, it's been in the freezer cryovac so it would last the distance out here in the desert. Now, what I've done today is I've strapped it to the rear tyre because I need it to defrost. Then I'm going to salt it, put a bit of liquid smoke, then chuck it back into the Waco before I need to cook it. So it's, a, it's an all-day process. So it starts right first thing in the morning, a couple of dunes, I reckon that'll be defrosted, and then straight into the Waco. Unreal. Up ahead, and we have got one almighty of a steep dune face. You can see from here just how soft it is, especially at the top. Okay, Brad's volunteered. Six-wheel drive, big V8. Let's see how he goes. Yes, come on. <laughs> this is an animal this thing. Yeah, well done mate. That's a that's a bloody good effort. <laughs> Shawno's turn. Let's see how he goes. Second. Third. Crazy. What an animal. Love the big eight. That's power. Oh. Getting that power down low in the rev range is what it's all about. You really want to make boost from just about idle. Lots of horsepower. Ooh, that makes me feel good in the desert. <laughs> all right, here goes nothing. Right on. Here comes the dog. Let's see how he goes. <laughs> hey, Stu. You probably would have got that if you stayed on the track. Let me give it one more go. You don't want to break anything, you want to sort of run that fine line between giving it your everything and not breaking the everything. Holy heck, Stu is not afraid to give it the berries. Have a look at that. That's it, that's it. Go back off now. Ooh, it is so close. So close. Stu made it within, I reckon, about two metres of the top of this dune, but just not quite enough. So we're going to use a snatch on this one because He's made it so close, and it's going to be relatively a straight pull rather than trying to come up the dune, so it won't take much. Just put the big six-wheeler in gear, and I reckon that'll be enough. Okay, here we go. There you go. Whoa. Maybe not. No, no, give it another one. <laughs> well, we've got a bit of a situation here. Um, Stu didn't make it over the top of the hill with that snatch recovery, and now we can't actually get the big six-wheeler to go backwards because it's just too much of a slope for it. So we've got a live snatch strap coming up with a tremendous amount of stretch in it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a real situation. So I think we're going to try and use some max tracks to get out. You don't want to go anywhere near that strap because no. a live strap, anything could happen. It's that just really it. dangerous. He only needs another metre. If he goes a metre and then gives it a bit of herb, Stu will come up. I'm going to stand back here and just use the <laughs> <It's> okay, <yeah. laughs> All we need to do here is get that six-wheeler free so that it can yes. get a bit more momentum and just pop Stu up and over the top. One, two, three. There you go, that did the trick. Righto, Andrew's turn, Yep. and he's gonna hit it hard. Holy balls! Whoa! Get up it! Get up it! 79 power. Good drive, Andrew. We got out of the way, mate. We were scared for our lives when you come to the top. We thought you were gonna go over the next dune. Steinbauer! Russell is up next, and he's no stranger to oh. deserts. Growing up in Africa. Get into it, buddy. He's in with a chance, are you? Oh! 
thought he had that. Max Trax. Max Trax. Right, tell us, mate. When it comes to Max Trax, people make a few mistakes with them. They're a pretty simple bit of kit, really. Very simple. Clear as much sand and that or whatever in front of the tyres as you can. So you can get it down under the tyre yep. as, as close as possible. Yep. When you jam it in, yep. shove it up as hard as you can against the tread. And you almost want to hear it go underneath yeah, the tread. Yeah, well, so you can see the teeth up against the tyre. That's the best way. Yep. You want them on a bit of an angle, sticking up like that, so yep. it actually lifts the vehicle up as it yep. comes forward. What's the driver going to do? Just low range first. Yep. Ease onto them. You'll feel the tyre grab them and pull them in. As soon as they're under there, yep. then you've got that traction. Then you can give it the, the right foot. And he's out. Oh, Easy yes. drive, as drive, drive, that. Drive. That's another way of doing it. <laughs> Well, that's feeling a little bit more defrosted. It's still a bit frozen in the middle, but when I put that in the Waco for the rest of the day, it should really uh, start to thaw out. A bit of liquid smoke. We're trying not to get the flies in here. So I'm going to keep it in the cryovac bag. Good old square of this stuff. And the cool thing about this is it's going to just stay in the bag, so everything's going to just sort of marinate, I suppose, when I put it back in the Waco. A couple of wraps of our foil just to make sure it doesn't leak all through the fridge. All right, that's looking good. Straight into the Waco now, that'll be right to cook tonight. Well lads, I reckon I'm going to remember that little detour for uh, quite some time. We didn't find the border, but I think we found something better. Let's head back down now and join up with that QAA line. How long for you just turning around and doing that again? Spend the night in the same place. Yeah, too right, Andrew. Righto. We're back on solid ground. You got a copy back there, Sean? Yeah, got you, mate. Mate, what would you say is the most famous crossing of the Simpson Desert? Uh, definitely have to be the QAA. Right you are, mate, and that's exactly what we are on. Right, I'm going to tackle the first of them right now. The QAA line runs for about 170 kilometres from Popel's Corner all the way to Big Red, just outside of Birdsville. It's a well-formed track and it does see a lot of traffic, which is not surprising, being one of Australia's most iconic four-wheel drive destinations. You've really got to be careful of oncoming traffic in this June country. You see, you can't see what's on the opposite side, and so it's yeah, vitally that. important that the lead vehicle in any convoy has a sand flag. Also, tune your UHF radio into channel 10. That's the channel everybody uses in the Simpson Desert, and by listening in on channel 10, you can tell if there's an oncoming party from quite some distance away. Oh my goodness, the crossing of the Air Creek. Two times I've been through this. Once, look at it now, gee whiz. Once, it was over Bonnet Deep and we had to winch up this bit here to get out. In fact, I put one of the big dents in the side of Shorty back then on that slope right there. And the second time, I camped in it just down there in the dry. So that's the third time I've crossed it. Which one did I enjoy the most? The time I had to winch out the other side. Absolutely amazing trip, that one. The water was freezing cold. There was water and mud everywhere. It's a trip I'll never forget. But today, I reckon that's how you'd see Air Creek. 99% of the time. We're making good time right now and we've eaten up a fair bit of distance. I reckon we're going to land in Birdsville right on schedule. Hey Graham, you got a copy mate? Yeah bud, sorry I was daydreaming then. You're right, mate, I reckon um, take this next uh, exit here and let's jump off the QAA and find a camp. Bit early innit? Look I want to do the cooking tonight and I've got something pretty special planned. Let me ask a question, do you need firewood? I'll need a fair bit of firewood and um, I'll need a cold beer. Right, eh, mate? I think I've got an idea what's going on, but I agree. Let's pitch camp. Just down here, eh? This will just about do it, I reckon. You come to the outback, bring your camp oven, and make sure you cook yourself a big roast. That's my plan anyway. Looks like it is time for the big feed tonight. Mate, I'm going to get a fire going in this hole here. The reason we dig a hole out here is because, A, we can. It's real easy to do. But the other reason is that the wind comes up out here on these big open play pans. It's protected. Sean, I reckon you get better coals in a hole as well. Yeah, big time. I reckon you do too. And then tomorrow when we leave, you fill it all back in. It looks as if it was. Oh, it's gone out. That's a big thing. It goes out underneath there. And the other thing too is, of course, if this floods, which it probably will do after a bit of rain, this will all just wash away and you'll never see it again. So I reckon it's good practice. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Cool, cool. I'll go get some more firewood, mate. Do it. We'll need a fair bit. Okay. 
it really is a testament to modern technology that you can store good food like that roast, a huge big chunk of meat, on such a long expedition and still be eating like kings on day eight. Righto, Shawno, do your thing, buddy, do your thing. And hurry up, my mouth is watering. All right, how good is it? We've come into camp and um, the sun's not even over the horizon, so we're nice and early, and for good reason too, because I'm cooking up tonight a pork roast. Now, as far as I'm concerned, when you come to the Simpson Desert, on the map and the permit to get in here, I should say you must cook a roast before you come oh, to the Simo. Because 100%. we're cooking in the fire tonight. So yeah. what I did before I actually left on this trip is I bought a big pork roast from the butcher, and I cryovacked it down, deep froze it, yep. put it in the freezer, and um, then I, I took it out last night actually, started defrosting it. I'm just gonna cut this in half because this is a five kilo roast, so cut straight down the guts of it. Way to rock and roll, mate. Straight in. This, this is nice and easy. I love doing a roast as well. You just, it is nice and easy. You just chuck that straight in. That's, that's worth a million dollars, that stuff. Whoa, Ooh, that's, that's some stuff, isn't it? So you've salted, oiled. Salted a little bit. You just wanna rub that salt in is what you're trying to do here. That's a go, that's a go. Gentle, mate, gentle. Anyway, we'll, we'll shut these up, because later on I'm gonna open them back up. Yep. Chuck some veggies on here. <clears throat> yep. And um, so, half an hour for every 500 grams. So, we've got a two and a half kilo roast. It was a five, but we've got two and a half kilo roast. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're looking at about two and a half hours Ooh. worth of cooking. Right go up. a little bit longer, you can do. And at the last moment, yep. We'll, yep. We'll, we'll increase the heat on top, yep. and that'll uh, get that crackling. Oh boy, that's hot. It's <laughs> very hot, Let's mate. Let's get that off there. You. That's smelling really good. <laughs> Look at yours. Look at yours. Mate, that is superb. That is looking pretty good, really mate. Good. Oh. These have been on for about an hour and a half, maybe Roughly. two hours. I'm going to add some veggies now and just get that. Yep, potatoes to the mate. Yep. 100%. Let's do Beat that. Are you having the Waco here? What are we adding? Can I give you a, a couple of things? Yeah, man. So, what I did is I actually froze down a lot of the veggies. You can actually see some ice still in there. Put that straight in. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, that's a big piece of meat. You're I'm gonna just, go all in here, are you? I'm just gonna put, yeah, them, put yeah, them yeah. straight in. Yep. So that, that's the sweet potato. Yep. This one here, if you can just humor me with a bit of this one. That looks fantastic. Ooh, I'm gonna put the lid back on this. Yep, it's looking good. Let's take it on that. Yep. Got to, I might just put a little drizzle a bit more. Yeah, you can't help, you can't help. Well, I'll put it around the potatoes yeah, 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 around in there the potato, as well. Yeah. Did you put salt down there? Well, I haven't yet, so good idea, good idea. Yep. You can't go too wrong. See this one here, it got a little bit flattened, a little bit burnt. Dude, the, that's, that's savagely fine. good. The, you can feel how good it actually is. Oh, oh try, yeah, a that. try that. Oh my goodness. Put the lid back on that. Oh! Holy heck. Let's get that back in the coals. Done. Let's All go. Right. So the key now, another hour. I reckon we're, we're on. I reckon that's been, it's been about four hours, I reckon. It's been a very long time. Yeah, oh, look at those. Savage, man. Look at those. Oh. Look at those are stir. Dude. Look at that, and they're all soft. That is next and level. And we've got gravy on the bottom, so. We really do. You know Ooh. you're doing well. <laughs> all right. Ooh, a little taste thing. Yeah, now the mate. Ah, that's really hot. Mm. Right, look at this one. That is really Dude, good. Dude, so man. good, so Just good. Just gonna put that straight on the old. Ooh, look at that. We've got gravy at the bottom here. The potato's mm. looking good. Mm. Look at that, that's lovely. Oh. One of the things I really love about a roast in any situation is it's really easy. You just. Super easy. Look at that, mate. It's, it's almost coming apart like pulled pork. All right, we're gonna get the boys in. Come on here. We are. Let me tell you a quick oh. secret while we've got the boys around. Yep. If you want to make a good camp anything around the campfire, simply make it last for about five hours. Yeah. Give them a bunch of beers and serve. No, up some but you don't pork. need that with it. That is so oh, good. No, it's unreal. It's just pulling apart, and you can What's taste the, key? the, the smoky key? flavor, the salt. Camp the key early. is simply to get into camp early. Yeah, exactly right. I always I say agree. this. Get into camp early. Get some firewood, sit down with mates, crack a beer or two, yeah. and cook a roast. Because a roast, I reckon at the end of the day, is one of the most Australian camp meals you can ever have. And if you do it right, right. holy heck. We're getting this. And we might have some lunch meat. Good folks, do yourself a favour, cook a roast. Mm. Even better, come to the Simpson Desert and cook a roast. Because trust me, it'll be the best roast you've ever had in your life. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power, King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? King's has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. 
At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter, you get more for less. time of morning, sun's just crept over the horizon. It's like someone's turned a switch on. It's called the dawn chorus. It's the time of the morning when kind of everything comes alive and makes its presence felt, but birds, they're the number one. They start singing and calling out to one another. Now, happens all around Australia. It's not unique, but in the Simpson Desert, you see in the middle of the day or at the night, it's deathly silent out here. You don't hear a thing. But for this one hour of the morning, when the sun comes up, the desert comes alive and you're reminded that this place, this place is full of life. Do yourself a favour next time you're out here, get up on one of these sand dunes and just check out how much activity takes place up on these sand dunes overnight. Lizards, insects, there's dingo prints down through here, one must have come through late last night. There's a lot of wildlife out here, but it's all quite small and of course that's because of the environmental conditions out here. It's hot, it's arid, it's dry, but they've adapted. A lot of critters, you've just got to take the time to find out about them. Look at all this. It's like peak hour in Sydney. I could, I could sit up here all day, but this is our last leg and I'm excited about that because today we've got two Australian iconics. That of course being Big Red, and then following that, you can bet your bottom dollar, I'm gonna have a beer at the Birdie Hotel. <laughs> so I'm gonna get going. Well boys, that's a campsite and a night I won't forget in a hurry. Don't worry, we got video evidence. <laughs> And yeah, me too, mate. That was um, cracking. That's a cool thing about the QAR. You can just sort of pull off anywhere here and find a cracking camp like that. Yeah, that desert roast you did last night, Sean, was ace, man. Yeah, I can still taste it. It's fantastic. Brad was trying to work it out before. He reckons about 300 sand dunes between here and Birdsville. Well, the good news is at the end of that, if anyone uh, doesn't object, is uh, we've got the uh, Birdie Pub. Yeah, what a pub that is, mate. Lead the way. Righto. Let's get into it. Oftentimes you will find it is a little easier to drive sand dunes first thing in the morning. Overnight moisture will have compacted the sand down and as a rule there hasn't been as much traffic through churning up the dune overnight. So everything has settled down and it does make it a little easier. However, depending on your direction of travel, you might just find you've got the sun in your eyes making it extremely difficult, not to mention slightly dangerous. Big Red is just around the corner. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, mate, especially from this side. Around the corner or over a few dunes, you reckon? Yeah, sorry, good points, Stu. <laughs> it's no corners out here. The size of this dune in front of us, though. I reckon that's about three quarters the size of Big Red. It'll be good to see from this side, only ever see it from the other side. Looking forward to climbing it. See if I can do it justice. Oh, I'm sure you will, mate. Ooh, it's a big one. Yep, oh, the bumps at the bottom. Up we come, up we come. When you're on a Simpson Desert crossing, you're going to come across a number of really big sand dunes. Big Red, yeah, it's the biggest. I'll tell you what, just getting there, you're going to have to conquer a number of really big ones. Two things you can put in your favour. One, of course, is momentum, and the other is gear selection. All right, select the correct gear. Now, here we go. Now, by build momentum, I don't mean just mash your foot into the floor, because, of course, too much momentum can lead to wheel spin, and, of course, that's a loss of traction, and that, of course, can get you bogged. I want you to build momentum before you get to the dune and then carry it all the way up through the dune like I've just done there. And I tell you what, with 430 Newton metres of torque on tap, that's pretty darn easy to do. But I tell you what, had I not built enough momentum or had I not got my gear choice correct and tried to change gear on that dune, it really would have been a different story. Now, I was in third gear low range there because it really was a big dune. And with the D-Max's Revtronic gearbox, I was able to lock that gear in so it wouldn't shift up or down. So I could keep those revs up, keep the momentum up, and sail to the top. It's a pretty easy tip, but I'll tell you what, give it a try next time you're out playing around in the dunes or doing your very own Simpson Desert Crossing. 
pretty soon, and there it is. yeah, Boys, big red. Why do they call it that, Graham? Well, in this light, it's hard to say, because it's not very red today. You call it big orange. Yeah, big orangey yellowy thing. Yeah, how good is it? I've got some memories on that hill. Uh, it's big, it's red, and uh, I'm ready. That looks steep. Changes every year. Looks pretty steep this year. All right, I can put a little wager on now that anyone who doesn't make it up big red has to shout us all a drink. Deal. You're on. I'll take your bet, sir. And then I'll buy you a beer. Hey, Graham, if my memory serves me correct, around the campfire, you're telling me uh, it's not the first time you've crawled up big red. No, mate, no, I've had a crack at it a few times. Sometimes I've won, sometimes I've lost. This is like the gunshot of um, the Simpson Desert. About four different ways up here. Yeah, there really is, isn't there? Only one way, that's up. That's where I plan to go. Hopefully, fingers crossed. What are you thinking, mate? I reckon that one right in the guts of it there, mate. What do you reckon? <laughs> look how steep it is at the top. Uh, I wasn't. I was going to look at that when I got there. Yeah, I think this is a fourth gear sort of hill, mate. When she starts bogging down in fourth, hit third, hit second, hit first, and then get bogged. <laughs> That's my plan. All right, well, we're not going to find out with me sitting down here. I'm going to give it a crack. Good luck, mate. You just remember, every attempt is a round of beers. We're into it. We're into it. We've got this. Come on, old girl. Go, 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 go. <laughs> no, didn't quite make it. So close, I can see. I can see Birdsville. <laughs> yeah, mate, just a schooner of Forex when you when you get to the hotel. Remember that day Graham rolled it going backwards down Big Red? Yeah, coming off the bloody thing's a bit sketchy. I'm gonna reverse back down the dune. <laughs> now, when coming back down the dune, you really want to keep on a straight angle. You don't want to get sideways. I remember in the dirty 30, mate. I had to go down to like 8 PSI, and that was the slowest run over Big Red in the history of Big Red, I reckon. <laughs> I might have to do that. I'll see. I'm going to have one more shot. You guys go for it. I'm going to let some air out of my tyres. Brad's opted to go next, <laughs> and he's into it. Just look at that monster go. It's going to be a cheap night for Brad. Well, Graham taking a little bit of air out of his tyres now. I'm sitting at about 18 PSI, so I'm going to give that a go first up, and um, if I don't make it after one or two attempts, it's, uh, I think we'll be going down at about 15, 14, and just keep going down until I make it, because you don't come out here and not drive big red. It's just one of those boxes you've got to tick. All right, I'm coming up. Okay, now for Shorno. Just listen to that V8, will you? <laughs> oh yeah, got another to put the brakes on at the top, mate. All right, I'm gonna have another crack at this. This time, I reckon I'm just gonna push that foot right through the floorboards. <laughs> Let's give it a go. Let's stay on these tire tracks. I'm in them. I'm in them. There you go. Look at that. Easily up and over the top. In fact, I almost had to put the brake on. Yes, big red. What dreams are made of. Yes, you are, big red. Oh mate, big red. Oh, I'll never tire of doing that. I love being up here, mate. First go to ear to ear. You don't you don't know anyone at beer? Oh, I'll tell you what, I can drink a couple though, after <laughs> doing that. Alright, Stu Dog! If Stu fails to make it up without help, I'll be off the hook. <laughs> He's taking a run up from I think Dale Housie, look at him. <laughs> You've got to stay in these wheel tracks too. If you come off them, you're done. Go on, go on, go on. Come on, Stu! Yes, sorry mate. His first attempt <laughs> fails, and this is looking good. It's a 4X mate. Scooter off. Mate, I reckon any sand, any sand driving, it's 100% tyre pressure in my opinion. Yep. You've got all the power in the world. So yep. What did you come up there, 18? 18 PSI. All right, yep. I came up in 10. 10 PSI. And, but I had to back off at the top, I would have... Yeah, I saw you just yep. straight Scooted up, up, straight but up. I had, I had 18 on my first attempt. And didn't no even way. come close. Well, yeah. I did, I got up here, but yep. no way. And then 10, let, let 8 PSI out. Straight up. Straight up. That's the tip. Oh, he's gone. He's, he's gone. gone he's screw this. <laughs> Looks smaller back here. Hang about. Oh, no, no. He's going for a bigger run up. Everybody look out. Hang on. Oh, on that. Two. Yeah, you got this. You got it. Ah. You got it. Come on. Oh. <laughs> so close. He's loving it. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh oh, he's stuck on the red. <laughs> that was really close. Keep your wheels straight. Now that seems obvious when you're in wheel ruts, but you'll be surprised how much the vehicle gets thrown around. If you can keep those tyres really straight, yep. you're going to have way more traction. As soon as you start hitting the sides of those ruts, yeah. you just lose all your momentum. Yep. Okay, he's going for a third run up. This could be an expensive night. Come on, Stu! Got this! You've got this! Go, Stu! Go, go, go! Yeah! yeah. But he's made it. Didn't exactly accelerate over the top, but he made it. Big red. Tick. Stu? What's going on, mate? What happened? If I was on solid ground, I could probably dr keep driving, but I feel like it's just going to sink and go over. <laughs> oh, you where did you go? You were, I reckon, that close to going over there. I know, that's why I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think if you kept going, you might have made it. Well, no, because it was going, because no, it was sand, see? You would have, you would have a little bit more mate. speed to run off the loop. Everyone celebrates Big Red in different styles, yeah, mate. And Stu? I reckon you nearly won. All right, well, we'll leave you here, mate. We'll go to the pub. I reckon if I pulled on this, you'd go over. Glory or death. Good thing I've got a storm here. Okay, now for Andrew. You got this, Andrew? Come on, boy. Oh, it sounds so good. Look at that go. The power of the Steinbauer is incredible. It makes such a big difference. You're going too fast. Slow down. Oh, he slows down at the top. So easy. Victory. Yes. He didn't even look like not making it up. He slowed down. He slowed down about three quarters yeah. of the way up. He's like, if I keep going at this speed, I'm going to go over it. <laughs> and last but not least, here comes Russ. Oh, oh, hold on to it. <laughs> hold on to it. He's got this. Well, that is a picture-perfect mm. drive. Mate, that's so impressive. Yep. Stock standard 79, yep. all these change is a set of all-terrains. Yep. No, that is really, and he's carrying all our jerry cans. And he's made it look pretty really easy. easy, so. What do you reckon we do? If I go forward, it's gonna go over. Because I need to go I'm backwards. Not, I'm not 100% confident about your backwards ability either. Oh, I'm that guy. The idea here is, Grain's gonna dig a hole under this tire, so hopefully it comes down at the same time of putting a bunch of max tracks on the other side. So when he does come back, It'll hopefully drop in one and rise up on the other side and he won't go over. <laughs> oh, mate, I think it's the rise in altitude that's caused things to go a bit pear shaped up here. Because you know that the Burzul Hotel is just through just there. Clicks that way. Andrew's come up and slid on the sand, which is really, really soft, got bogged himself. Miss Chew's going to be by about this much. So now we've got the big 6x6, six six, just going to basically attach the winch to the back of. Andrew, try and pull him sideways and back out. Recover Andrew first, and then we'll get back to Stu. Just uh, when they attach the winch and all the rest of it and start winching you out, I think it's important for you not to drive. Just go back slow, slow. More winch, more winch. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, yeah, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Unwinch. Yeah, good drive, mate. Hold it there. Well, that's the first problem solved, now we got what do you do with a problem like Stu? <laughs> we'll get him down, he'll be alright. Hey, Andrew, yeah, if you just right over. Of course, it. the plan of attack here is twofold. Get Stu back down off that dune and keep him upright at the same time. And that's why we're yep. using a winch plus the straps plus another winch just to keep him in the right spot. As you can see, we've put a pulley block on the back of Andrew and the 6x6 is driving the winch. So we've got the winch attached to Stu's roof. Now, the whole idea behind that is if he does start to go over, that winch will tension it and bring a lot of the weight back off that side so he doesn't roll over. At the same time, Stu's going to use the max track to try and reverse out on his own steam. Complicated, but I reckon it'll work. All right, here we go. Hey, you should be able to just gently go back onto those max tracks, mate. I'll keep the pressure on that. Hi. Keep your hands in the vehicle at all times. Yeah, no, I'll wear the window up for that exact reason. <laughs> With all eyes on deck to make sure nothing can go wrong and that we've got it covered from all angles, we're just going to gently pull Stu back until he's on a far far more acceptable angle. There he is. Drive out of that. He's back. Good to have you back, Stu. Thank you, Lisman. Thank you, ball boys. Uh, what are you, Scotch and Coke? Uh, I wouldn't want to. Start with the beer. I'll start with the 4X. Yeah, yeah. Then probably we'll go to the runs a bit later. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Sound good? Cheers, mate. Can you... Because um... you guys are good at keeping up with me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a red up, go over the Mate, how many times have you done Big Red now? Oh, quite a few times now, mate. Up and down it, back and forth, sideways, oh, I love, I love up this and down. Yep. Not like Stu, though, never do it like that. <laughs> what I love, you always seem to get at the end of a Simpson Crossing, you're here, just as that sun's just touching right, the horizon, mate. everything lights up, Imagine as far time. as I'm concerned, mate. Only one thing better. What, what could be better than this, mate? Let me ask the boys. You boys want to go for a beer at the pub? Yeah, <laughs> they're super yes, keen, they mate. Oh, yeah, straight in my car. Do you know how keen I am? Here we go now. <laughs> what a great end to an epic adventure. Big Red, you really are amazing. Now, I'm thirsty, let's go.
pretty soon and we've hit Birdsville and the iconic Birdsville pub. All right, well, cheers, boys. You. Cheers, Sean. Cheers, lads. Chin chin. I reckon that'll go down as one of the better trips I've ever done over Simo, mate. Yeah, the Simpson Desert, it's one of those places that just it doesn't disappoint. Uh, the flies did. No, they the were, flies were pretty gnarly. They were loving it too. Look, yeah, everyone's loving it out there. I think it's. Every Australian needs to get out to the Simpson Desert and do a, a crossing. It doesn't matter if you go the easy way, the hard way, up, 100%. down, north, south, K1 line. Yep. There's so many different tracks in there. Yep. We have an absolute ball though. It is. It, it has to be on your bucket list and I, I would put it up pretty pretty darn high. Yep. What time of year? Let's just give a quick tip. What time of year? Well, the was pretty bad, the hotter it is, I think. Yep. So if you go, I reckon, any time after May, like yeah. June, July is probably the best time. Yep. It's nice yep. and cold during the nights. Yep. Um, was it actually cold on the entrance? It was. We got some cold nights, yeah. Either way, I guess what I was going to say is, just go. Just go and see the Simpson Desert because, folks, it is next level. Absolutely beautiful. You'll remember it for the rest of your life. In fact, I guarantee you, you can't just do one Simpson Desert crossing. You're going to do three, four, five, six. It's that good. Now, we are sticking around because what's coming up this weekend? We've got the old Rodeo on. We've got the Rodeo. I'm going to strategically break down at the Birdsville <laughs> Hotel for maybe a week or two. That's it. So we're sticking around. If you're coming up with the Rodeo, catch us here. Otherwise, we'll catch you next time on Dog. Four to action. He can do it. He does it well. He does it well. Cheers, Dog. <laughs> If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test. So they're ready to be put to use. Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries though, can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius, and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. 
Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. Your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes, and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind. One less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two-piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. The raised and closed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus, your firewood lasts longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo, or your shed for maximum warmth. And the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the Premium Camp Oven Stove as required. Inside, you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down too, with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other, with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure King's premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too. You asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two tonne ATM. 
but don't worry if you already own an MT-1 because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT-1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the four-wheel drive Supercenter website. Now with a two-ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure King's MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before. 